Good morning, everybody. It is a crisp and cool Thursday morning yes, in beautiful North Georgia. And I'm joined by Paul Kiker, who has been, you know, I, I went back to programs that we did years ago, like 14 years ago. I was thinking it was 15 years. It has been, yeah. we are starting the 15th year, and I'm like, I did a year before you came on because I did some yeah. cooking programs before you came on. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> We have seen the ups and downs, the ins and outs. We have seen the economy fly. We've seen the economy fail. We've seen the economy come back. We've seen the economy sinking. We've seen fuel prices at extremely high, crazy prices. But we have also seen America change drastically. Um, we are losing, how many friends have we lost between us to COVID? Oh my goodness. I know I've lost at least 10. I think I've lost somewhere around five. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something that normally yeah. we wouldn't have that conversation. We wouldn't say, you know, bless her heart, somebody passed away and went to yeah. be with Jesus because they were 90 years old. That's normal. But when we say our 50 year old friends or our 27 year old friends or our 30 year old friends yeah. are not making it home from the hospital. And, and last night, and this wasn't due to COVID, but Ball Ground lost a very, very special lady, Kathy Roper, whose husband David had just preached at our church last oh, wow. week, went to be with Jesus. Now, David is um, in a wheelchair-like thing, and Kathy is his helper and his helpmate and the love of his life, and she's gone to be with Jesus. And I said, how do you not be bitter and angry and cry why is Kathy gone when she was his helpmate to be there to take care of him and his needs? Right. He's a preacher. He believes that God's plan is perfect. And so to sit there and watch his wonderful, beautiful wife go to be with Jesus, and he's rejoicing because his wife is with Jesus. She's Isn't that hard? Right yes, now, but I yes. Can't, I mean, that, that takes a lot of faith and a lot of trust and 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 obviously he's got a strong walk with the mm -hmm. Lord to be able to stay positive. Absolutely, that. absolutely. Because um, lately I have seen, been put to the test so many times and so many times and I keep saying, okay, God, I know that you're in charge. I know that you got me where you want me. I know that this is your your command and, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I just like, I don't know, you know, I, I told you I'd been having some really serious nightmares lately. Yeah. And I don't, they say a lot of times if you take a different medication that it will cause you to have weird dreams. And all I'm taking is lots of super vitamins. So <laughs> lots of vitamins, lots of vitamins. If vitamins are causing this, I don't know if I want to be healthy or not. Right. But but um, we have both made it through the COVID. You had it, I had yes. it. We're approaching the end of the year that we can say will be the worst year in COVID numbers. The first right. year was bad, but this year has been worse. Yes. Anybody in your office coming down with these new strains? No, so well. Thank God. Yes and no. Back in uh, September, I believe, COVID burned through our office. Mm -hmm. So uh, Renee's family was exposed to it for the second time. Wow. Or Beverly Burnett, and then um, you know her her um, stepfather had passed away. Right. Running. Right. So Tony passed away. Mm -hmm. Carrie's family you know, all got COVID. She didn't, but her husband, her in-laws, her daughter had it. Um, you know, her her father-in-law spent some time in the hospital and and they came through and and uh, so Dylan's family's been okay. John Alexander that works in our Athens office, him and his whole family had it uh, a month ago. Wow. So, and uh, um, so of course it hit our family when you Back had when it, first came around. Y'all, all three had different symptoms, though, didn't you? Did yeah. You have so different? for me, I had been. Uh, Holly had it in June of 2020, July of 2020. She actually came down with it when I was on my fishing trip. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that was a time I'm like, I flew out to Idaho that year, and which was interesting. Mm -hmm. But I decided to embrace the courage and go. Uh, she got it when I was gone, uh, but I got it in November. I'd been out at our hunting club, Milledgeville and had driven through a field of goldenrod. So my sinuses just, you know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. night. And I thought just sinuses, that's what it was. Goldenrod bothers me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the second day of not being able to walk 10 feet, I was so tired. But my cough was productive. Yeah. I kept taking my vitamins. and But I was in the bed five days. It took me 15 days in the gym to get back to normal. Wow. And, wow. Uh, so, 
I didn't realize I had it till I lost my smell and taste, you know, the third or fourth day. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, now I got to quarantine. Every symptom that I hit was there. Wow. And uh, so I was fortunate. I didn't. And thank anything. goodness you are a health nut. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> he's he's I a sweet nut, but he's a health nut. You drink a lot of water. You take a lot of vitamins. Yes. You you exercise. You give your body what it needs. Yes, I try to. Yes. And and then COVID hit you that hard. Right. Okay, it hit me mildly, but with those raging headaches. And guess what? I haven't had in three weeks. No headaches. Three weeks, y'all. Three. Praise weeks, the Lord for that. A headache. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to last, but I, I'll tell you, yeah. the headaches were, you understand why people say, I can't stand this pain anymore. It was unbelievable. Did you have headaches with COVID? I never had headaches. I never had headaches. Now, my mother, when she got it about, let's see, so she got it back in October. And uh, so she didn't realize she had it till about the fourth day and was, you know, started feeling a little better to go back to work and lost her smell and taste, got tested. Mm -hmm. But her cousin, which was the same age as her, he, he passed away from it. Wow. So wow. they had it at the same time. He wow. ended up in the hospital. Doctor said he's getting better and then he had a heart attack, mm -hmm. you know, and passed mm -hmm. away. So there's no rhyme or reason. I know so many people younger than me who yeah. didn't make it out of the hospital. Yeah. I know so many people younger than me who were in the hospital over 30 days. So I feel very, very blessed and very fortunate and, and uh, I thank God every day that I made it through that. Mm -hmm. I don't want another round of it, I will say that no, because now that either. I haven't had the headaches for three weeks, I don't want another round of COVID. So I'm being cautious. I have a dear, dear friend, Papa Jack Bryson, who is being laid to rest and I talked to Denise and I said, I'm preparing for surgery and I'm going for pre-op today and I don't want to be around anybody that could possibly, because COVID is all over North Georgia now, right. and I don't want to be in that arrangement. So she said, I'll explain to the family why you're not here, because I would love to be there. It'll be, but she said it's going to be broadcast. Right. So that's wonderful. I'll get to be there that way. That's good. And I think COVID brought us to a level People are broadcasting funerals right. because that's the safety, you yeah. know, and, and if you're like me, pre-op and, and the doctor wants you cootie free and all these things, then yeah. Yeah. So, so. I'm not going to get to go to his service. And so our life changed. We yeah. haven't seen normalcy yet. No, we haven't. And, you know, and the government reactions around the world are so, you know, totalitarian in some areas and just absolutely ridiculous. and. And, and you know that it's it's tough times. You know you got it's Australia. Tough times. I don't know if you've been keeping up with what's going on in Australia. A little bit, it's, yes. It's absolutely terrifying. Yes, yes. And then from what I understand, Austria came out today and said that it's going to be jail time if you don't get the vaccination. Wow. But yet it doesn't keep from spreading. And you know I I, I, I think people would accept it a little bit easier if if there wasn't somebody it wasn't being forced mm -hmm, and there mm -hmm. was open and honest debate about it yeah yeah you know let's put people on tv let's bring every question out into the light i mean you know it's interesting in the investment business when when somebody comes in you talk about risks you talk about goals you talk about you know this path versus that path mm -hmm. and you help somebody formulate a wise decision and it just it's maddening to me to see our politicians refuse to consider or refuse to even discuss some of the alternative studies that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when truth reigns in the full broad daylight again, mm -hmm. that, that things will get a lot better. I hope so. But we're not there yet. No, we're not. And uh, did you see the Atlanta mayoral campaign and, and who was elected? No, I did not. Well, it wasn't Felicia Moore that had been on the council for about 30 years. It was somebody else. And I was like, what? How did this happen? It wasn't uh, Reed that went back and ran again after being the mayor. It wasn't anybody we expected. And I'm like, so Atlanta is under a whole new reign. And for people who don't know, Atlanta's only 60 miles from where we live. I know. So. And I don't even know who, so do you know anything about who won? I haven't even. I know he's a looked. guy. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> and, and I laughed about it because I said, you know, that used to be my city. That used to be my town. I love that place. I wouldn't go down there now. And I'm sure you have to go for events and different things. I do from time to time. Ain't nothing down there I've ever lost that I need yeah. to find again. No. I just, I'm so weird about it. And, um, I'm so thankful to be serving the North Georgia mountains. I'm so thankful to be, and I call it our safety net. Yes. 
And I do feel like we live, you're raising your children in a safety net, yes. which is Gilmer so, County. I mean, every area has some problems, uh -huh. but every area has weaknesses and strengths. But uh, it was amazing to me because I've, I've got a couple of retirement plans that we handle in Atlanta. So, you know. So you go to Atlanta. So I, I go to Atlanta and I went to meet with one of the retirement plan participants and I walked into the building and, you know, a couple of people were looking at me. Well, I'm. I'm used to not wearing a mask up here, yes, right? Yes. So everybody's looking at me, and I walk in, and I'm like, "Oh, I, I didn't even have it. I mean, I, I had a mask in the car, but it yeah. took me a few minutes to find it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulled it out, and you know, but it was funny because everybody came in and sat down, you know, one on one, and they take their mask off. They're like, yeah. can, can, "Is it okay if I take this off?" Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. It's really a completely different world down mm -hmm, there right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. It really is, and and I understand it. I mean, I, I do. Oh, yeah, this is yeah. this is incredibly dangerous. So it is. Yep. Um, but I don't think it's going away. It Gosh. doesn't look like it. I keep saying one day we'll wake up and, and we will be back to a normal life. Right. But, and a normal life was you. You got your flu shot or you didn't get your flu shot. Nobody told you you had to get your flu shot. Right. You made a decision. Do I get a flu shot or do I not get a flu shot? Okay, you get the flu shot. And then you get through flu season and nine times out of ten you have the flu, but it's a milder <laughs> case. So, you know, it's very different. And um, I know so many people now who still, and I get very tickled at this, and it's nothing to make light of, but if you're riding down the road in your own car mm -hmm. and you got on gloves and a mask, <laughs> I have to question, what are you thinking? Because I sanitize my steering wheel, I wipe down my car, you know, I do things like that. I keep these little wipes. I've, I've kept the white business in business. but. I just, I still think I want my freedom. I right. want to be in my car, in my space without a mask on. Right. So it's very strange. But uh, we, you know, I look at today as one day closer to spring. Yes. Because I want my daylight savings time. I want, yes. I want daylight yes. back. Does that drive you crazy when it's dark early? It does. Well, it drives me more crazy when it gets dark. Yeah, dark. Well, you say dark early. Dark at 525 in the, in the afternoon. Dark at 525. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of doing away with daylight savings time. Absolutely. Because by the time I get home, I will vote for no, anybody who will do that. Yeah, there's no chores that I can mm -mm. implement. No. And I understand why no. it was implemented years ago. You can't even go out and feed your, if you have animals, yeah. you have to go out with a, a spotlight to feed your animals. I know. So I wish they would do away with it, but. You know, Who makes that decision? I have no clue. Well, they I need to no think clue. about it because yeah, there it's are a lot, just foolishness. There are a lot of things in our society that I think it would be so easy to vote upon and and get the feedback from the populace and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you know because mm -hmm. do we really want to pick that battle? I mean, who's, right. it, who's it going to impact? Yeah. I mean, I understand when people had to get up and families had to farm before they went to school. Right. Right. Um, Okay, as the money man, yes. we're going to talk about something that's really dangerous because as the money man, there have been billions of dollars made on COVID. Absolutely. There have been billions of dollars milked from our economy and made on COVID. Yes. From, I hate to say this, but, and I love all our funeral directors, they're doing so much business, you have to get in line to get a spot to have a funeral now. They're doing it the way they've always done it. They meet with your family, they give you a time slot, but you don't get it like the day of or right. the day after, you gotta wait in line. But the pharmaceutical companies have made out like bandits. Yes. And have been funded by whose money? Ours, the taxpayers. Yeah, our money. And they're selling it at an unbelievable profit. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, I love the shot. I love the signs. It says free COVID shot, and I'm like, oh, it's not free to anybody. It's costing everybody who works. Yeah, it's, it's costing, costing everybody. everybody. But people don't think that way. They've not been educated enough. I do. <laughs> I, I, I know, do. but it's a it's a smaller subset of the population that thinks that way. And you look at you know just the amount of money that Pfizer and those companies have spent advertising for all of the the major media shows. Oh yeah. Um, you know, it's like Warren, I, think, I believe it was Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger uh, made the comment, says, if you'll show me the incentive, I will show you the outcome. Mm -hmm. So what I don't understand is why didn't somebody negotiate, okay, if we're going to pay for this research and production, then you're not going to make these ridiculous profits. You're mm -hmm. going to make a small amount of profit because mm -hmm. you've got employees to right. take care of. Sure. But when you're, when you're just throwing, you know, the government does nothing efficiently. And uh, they, 
from it, buying airplane toilet some, seats to yeah. anything else they do. When they're spending somebody else's money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What's our natural tendency? Our natural tendency is to, to try to take care of those that are close to us. And when you look at these politicians that have these hundred million, you know, thirty, forty, fifty, hundred million dollar net worths on on you know, don't get me wrong. $160,000 a year salary. It's a nice salary. But you don't find many doctors that are making mm -hmm. four or five or six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars a year mm -hmm. with, you know, 20, 30, and 40 million dollar, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. since the office called it, mm -hmm. um, 20 or 30, 40 million dollar net worse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's something wrong in the system. And, and we have the technology today to disclose it. I mean, I, somebody was asking me about getting into politics, if I would support them, I said, I will if you'll completely disclose your financial situation mm -hmm. before, during, and after. Every mm -hmm. stock trade you place, mm -hmm. every gift you make, mm -hmm. everything so that, that it's clear before the public because that's the only way to make sure you're not corrupt. Yeah. I know somebody who was thinking about running for mayor and they said you have to provide a financial statement. He you decided do. not to run for mayor. <laughs> so, because he, he wheels and deals. And yeah. there's a lot of wheeling and dealing that doesn't always get documented. And right. so you just, oh yeah, well, so and so and I traded this and this and this. And so it's it's hard to identify it all. It is, but you know, there, there's still a responsibility. Mm -hmm. One, we need the people to run that don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, because power corrupts absolutely. And, uh, you know, I was listening to an interview um, with Grant Williams the other day about a lady who was in the, the Bush administration, and, and she was talking about, uh, she talk, called it Gollum, said, you know, people were like, before they went into the White House, talked to, to the second Bush. I can't remember exactly how to separate him, but, mm -hmm. uh, but the second Bush, she said, she says, like, I'm going to go tell him this needs to be done and that needs to be done. And says, as soon as they walk into the Oval Office, it's like, yes, sir, yes, sir, whatever mm -hmm. you think is right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and that's the problem. Everybody wants to please the president because mm -hmm. he's got all these things that, you know, all of the benefits that come with it, the potential appointments, and people need to focus on doing what's right in spite of whatever the potential reward mm -hmm. is. But that's a hard thing in our society because Americans worship money. It's so funny because I financially supported both Bushes today. Mm -hmm. No, wouldn't even take them to lunch. <laughs> wouldn't even take <laughs> right. them to lunch. Wouldn't right. do it. Um, you see things differently when you really look at the whole picture. You really and do. I think that's something that we're looking at. And, and I look at, I, I've been a businesswoman all my life, and, and I think about the money that's been wasted and, and the lives that have been right. lost. And the, you know, I wish COVID had never happened. I wish we'd never heard those words. And um, I don't know where we will ever find out the truth. I think I right. know the truth. And I think that most people understand that right. it was created and sent to destroy. Yes. It was a bit of a seek and destroy mission and um, sadly it accomplished that. And we've right. lost so many friends. When I think about from Turtletown, Tennessee to Ball Ground, Georgia, I can give you a list of people in every single town that we have lost somebody that was like, oh my gosh, they were so healthy. They were so on top of their game. They right. were so happy and they're gone now because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very strange, so. Well, yeah, it is. It's it's um, a corruption reigns right now across the board. Mm -hmm. And you know, what are the politicians giving people? The average American wants something for nothing. Yeah. I mean, really, people don't want to be disciplined. You, most people are only going to be as disciplined as they have to be. Mm -hmm. And if you've got politicians that are like, "Hey, we'll just print money and give it." Well, you know, it's literally just digital um, you know, digits on a screen that they can print and put into the economy, and nobody seems to pay a price for that. Nobody has paid a price, mm -hmm. but nothing in life is free. Mm -mm. Nothing in life is free. It, if somebody gives you something free, they had to sacrifice for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is nobody seems to be sacrificing yet, but what we are starting to see is the arrogance of our central planners, you know, because of certain demographic forces and economic cycles, we inflation has not been a big problem. Mm -hmm. It wasn't after the, the collapse in 2000 and the monetary response. It wasn't after the housing collapse. There, I mean, there was, there was deflation, right? Oh, big. But then after that, the economy had so much damage done to it that it just made, the, it made these leaders more bold and more bold and more bold. And now you've got the Federal Reserve that's 
wanting to control climate change and you know vaccine status, you know all of these things, and we're starting to see the fruit of all that money being printed. Um, we shut down the supply chains, and you know. Paul, I, I don't understand that. I, I see the containers sitting, and they promise that they are loaded with the material and the parts, and then right. they have somebody looking for a radiator for an antique Cadillac, not an antique, but a 1992 Cadillac. Right. And you know, normally you could walk into the parts store and have the radiator in in three hours. No, they can't even get the radiator. No. So the supply chain. What is the point in stopping our supply chain? Well, I, I think I don't think that they were. I think they were so focused on the fear of the virus that they really didn't take into consideration the damage that would be done. I think it was just a grave error uh, from the Trump administration to the Biden administration to others. Because no matter how how good you know Trump can be, you're only as good as the advice that you're getting. Mm -hmm. And when you have to make quick decisions, if you have people that that aren't seeing the big picture giving you advice, then you can make mistakes. So, you know, I was telling my wife and she was so tired of hearing it and my staff was so tired of hearing it. I'm like, look, we just shut the economy down. Mm -hmm. Unemployment should have been sufficient enough to cover everyone, right? I mean, we have to live our lives like tough times are coming. Winter comes, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean that, you know. The seasons so change and winter's seasons gonna be change, here and, and spring's comes, coming back. And you have to save enough in the summer to survive the winter. Well, um, you know, nobody's thinking about that. So, oh, well, let's just print a whole bunch of money and instead of giving unemployment insurance, let's give another $600 a week. So people were making more than what they were before. Mm -hmm. So they've got all this spendable money. What most people do, if you look at 70% of the population right now, you know, some of those statistics say they have, I'm gonna go with a higher number, it's actually lower, but let's, they have less than $2,000 that they can put their hand on. Oh yeah. So. They shut the economy down. They give people all of this extra money, and they spend it. So we ran On this sixty-five-inch TVs. In hindsight, now it was absolutely stunning how efficient our global just-in-time inventory was. But now you've got bottlenecks, and we're, what we're starting to see is all of the business-driven government regulations to protect business. Okay, now, now don't get me wrong; it's unethical. But I understand why a business owner would try to slide some money under the table to a politician to protect their business, mm -hmm. okay? It's unethical, but I can understand a business owner having that te temptation, especially if they don't realize they gotta meet their maker one day. Mm -hmm. And greed takes over, which greed does take over. We've all been subject to greed. You have, I have, you have, everybody mm -hmm. has. Mm -hmm. So you take that situation where where the politicians have put in barriers to entry into a business hire, you can't just go start a business now, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you've got all of these studies, so you've got these shipping containers that are that are bottlenecked. Sitting there, you can't stacks, hire, and stacks and you stacks. You can't hire longshoremen to come in. No. You, you can't hire truckers fast enough to come in. No. And it's you can't crazy. start a trucking company that easy or that no, quick because no. all of the barriers to entry are high. And there are no drivers because they all have jobs. The right. ones that are fit to hire are hired. But these politicians can print money and give it to everybody. And oh, we get quicker votes out of that because everybody's happy. And it's not, an, it's an instant return where they should have been taking that money and instead of sending it overseas and doing all these ridiculous studies, putting it into you know, all right, let's help businesses get started. Let's help truckers get back in this. Let's help, you know, alleviate this. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make for a good 30 to 60 second sound bite. And it doesn't make for easy votes for somebody going, hey, I'll give you what you want, mm -hmm. just vote for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, mm -hmm. we have an integrity problem as a nation. And I like listening to Jordan Peterson. And, and one thing he talks about is he said, how does a country fall apart? He said, every one of us are responsible because we either stand by and say nothing, mm -hmm. we stand by and do nothing, mm -hmm. or we, we join the herd. So it, it's a collective issue in our country that we individually have all stood by, been silent, and you know what's the old saying? All the evil, all we need for evil to reign is for good people to stand by and say nothing and mm -hmm. do nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. You know, it's unfortunate, but, but the situation we're in now, what are the governments gonna do? If you let interest rates rise, then what's that gonna do to housing? Kill housing, kill housing. It's gonna kill housing. It's gonna kill housing. It could kill the stock market. Mm -hmm. 
um, if you if you don't let interest rates rise, then inflation can get out of control. And you know that seems good to begin with, but you go back and look at Germany and all the countries around the world that have experienced inflation, hyperinflation, it crushes the poor, mm -hmm. uh, but benefits the asset holders. Mm -hmm. So we're continuing to push this divide where the rich keep getting richer, both because of the assets they own are benefiting from inflation, and you know what their families have learned and, and how to manage money makes them better makes them wealthier so something has to break mm -hmm. I just don't know when it breaks <clears throat> but, but when it does it's gonna be bad well I've been there when it broke the last time yeah I, I don't want to be here when it does it again okay we're gonna take a commercial break and we hope that you will uh, pay attention to our sponsors and one of our sponsors is a very nice young man from down in ball ground and he does massive remodels and he's just finished one that um, if I were him, I'd probably be screaming and crying and shouting and being so happy to be done with that one because it was a tough one. But that's what you do. You know, you develop a business plan and you step up and you do it and you put the you put the labor in and you do that. Yes. And that's what Scotty did. He'd been on a regular job for 16 years and he chose to go out on his own. This is now his second year beginning being on Good his own. Him. Wouldn't he rather be back getting that check and letting the other guy worry about it? No, he really loves what he's doing. Yeah. And so um, we love that he's on board now. And uh, if you want remodeling done, be sure and pay attention to the commercial and you can get his lovely wife Evelyn's phone number off there. We'll be back in just a minute. United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside-down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Tons of work. Okay, we're back, guys. Paul, oh, year end is coming. Yes. Is it time for people to invest year end? You made a little money, you got a little money stashed away. Are there things you can do to invest right now and make some money? You can. I mean, there's nothing easy about where this market is to invest. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's priced to perfection. Um, so, but with that being said, if you're investing for a long-term goal objective, there are incredible opportunities out there now. 
but it's it's much less easier than what it used much much harder than what it used to be. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy to invest right now and have the confidence that you're not carrying substantial downside risk uh, that's equal or greater than that upside potential that's there. So there are several areas, you know, that we've sat down and talked to people that are probably once in a lifetime opportunities. Mm -hmm. And when things rebalance um, and re revert to the mean, there's going to be lots of money made. Mm -hmm. There are other categories that are just priced for fairy tales. So it's not easy, but yes, there are opportunities. Mm -hmm. If somebody is looking first time, 40 years old, save some right. money, you know, is it, is it safe? Is it secure? Can they do it with $5,000? Can they do it with $40,000? What do they need to, to walk in the door? Well, it depends on their situation. So the first thing that I advise is you've got to have a six to 12 month emergency fund. Mm -hmm. So if you do not have a six to 12 month emergency fund to cover all of your expenses in the event that you were to lose your job, right? Six months, you can still make cutbacks and it lasts mm -hmm. for another 12. Um, if you want to be a little more conservative, keep 12 to 24 months. I'm a big believer right now of about 24 months is what I like. You miss mm -hmm. some opportunity on earning that money, mm -hmm. but its job, is, the job of that money is to get you through tough times so that you're in a position to take advantage of it mm -hmm. or survive it. Once you have that in place, if, if you're a younger investor, investor, dollar cost averaging is a great way right now because if the market was to drop substantially, if you can if you continue to invest you're just buying more shares mm -hmm. and it's an odd situation with investors if you're 40 you know we love instant gratification and typically that's what keeps people disciplined to do, to stay invested but the best thing that could happen for you is the market to go sideways for 10 years and you keep buying shares and buying shares and buying shares and then when the next run comes you're making a fortune because you have a lot more money in there mm -hmm. so you know you do need to invest for retirement and invest for the future based upon your goals and objectives because if you don't do it now because you're scared of the market dropping or something of that nature then you're probably not going to do it when the market drops so invest now get started develop a plan I'd be a little more cautious than what I otherwise would be uh, but that long term you're still accumulating assets and if mm -hmm. you're very careful and critical about the investments you purchase and you're not buying them based on popularity you're buying them based on long-term business viability and, and, and putting thought into it, you're going to be okay. You know, I look back at a stock that has traditionally done well forever and ever and ever, and I don't even know if it does now, Coca-Cola. Right. My mother worked for Coca-Cola in the mm -hmm. 60s. If she had taken the stock options they gave her and right. she had invested it, oh my goodness right. gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. I remember when was it UPS first started Correct. doing business mm -hmm. and UPS stock was just super low mm -hmm. and now it's super high. Right. Krispy Kreme started out low, went super high and then flunked crashed. again. Yeah. Yes, crashed again. Sears was my wise, stupid move. Bought Sears stock and it went under. <laughs> you know? So it's very scary, but it's also very rewarding. Right. And um, I think you have to take some risk, but mm -hmm. when you think about how many people have struggled to keep food on the table, and you're talking about yes. six to 12 months put aside, that's like a dream fairy tale. It is, but the reality is it can be done. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how mm -hmm. many people that I have consulted over the past 20 years, and they set a goal. Um, you, know, hey, you know how you can save $20 a day? What, how? Don't smoke. Yeah, don't smoke. Seven dollars a pack. Are you drink kidding water. me? Yeah, drink yes, water. Yes, drink water. <laughs> yeah, sodas are what? Nearly three dollars a piece now, or two dollars yeah. a piece. Yeah. So there are ways yeah. to do it. If you stay focused on it, you can get there. But the the problem is, is everything in our society is so instant gratification. What people do is they look back and they go, "Wow, if I'd have bought Tesla, this would have happened. So I'm going to buy Tesla. Mm -hmm. And or if I'd have bought this, you know, I'd have bought that. And, and you look at like Amazon, everybody wants to own it, but few people stayed in it from the year 2000 when it peaked and it was around 2011 or 12 that it didn't even get back to that level till then. Mm -hmm. So investing takes work, it takes research, it takes discipline, and it's not easy. Anybody can make money in a bull market, right? 
anybody can make money in housing when it when people mm -hmm. are given when it's a seller's market and people right. are just offering ridiculous right. prices. Yeah. yeah. There are people who don't because yeah. they really don't pay attention to details. Yep. But it's surviving the full cycle that matters, right? How many times have you seen people wiped out? I mean, more people you run into that are older and have invested for a period of time have have those experiences where they got wiped mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like I was telling people, I don't I don't think you didn't buy Krispy Kreme through me back then, but no. I, I was telling a client when they purchased it, I was like, you need to sell this. And I and I remember the data, because one of the analysts gave it, said for Krispy Kreme to justify this this price level, every man, woman, child, baby, and child born expected to be born in the next 12 months has to eat three Krispy Kreme donuts every single day. Oh wow! And you that know, crazy? when I told the client that, they're like, uh, "Okay, yeah, let's sell it." Mm -hmm. Most people didn't mm -hmm. because, oh, it's Krispy Kreme. I love Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. You know, sometimes you know, just because you like a stock doesn't mean it's a good company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it takes research and it takes effort. But what's so dangerous about the market we're in right now? is the only thing that it's taken to be successful is to put your faith in the Federal Reserve and the politicians. It's not the business cycle. It's not normalization of interest rates. It's, hey, is the, is the Fed going to bail us out? And, and those of us who run risk-managed portfolios, it's a dangerous place to be because the market's relying upon faith in an institution that's con controlling things, essentially. Mm -hmm in an incredibly complex and dynamic, you know, global economy that whenever that last pill quits working or that, that little extra dose kills the patient, I mean, one thing I've learned in my life is more is not necessarily better. I mm -hmm. killed all the grass in my front yard. <laughs> You know, like I was so tired of the weeds coming up, and I was like, I, I was doing 10% more, 10% more, and that last time it was like perfect, and I'm like, well, let's find the threshold and we'll come back. I did not know I was going to kill all the grass in my front yard. And you did. So I did. Um, but, but, you know, more is not necessarily better. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'm a big believer, allow free markets to reign. The government should protect us against theft, protect us against, you know, somebody trying to keep us from pursuing liberty and, mm -hmm. and freedom, mm -hmm. but allow businesses to come up and stop propping up these companies just because they're supposedly too big to fail. That's what happens. That's how creative destruction occurs. And, and if the government continues to prop up all of these businesses and allow these massive businesses just become bigger, they're naturally going to have the resources to crowd out competition. And competition creates new ways of doing things. It, the creativity in that process and allowing people to have the creativity to bring new things to market is what makes our society better. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I think the government's too big. I think they're, they're educated idiots is what I would uh, call them to be. It seems like you know the more educated somebody is, the, the dumber they become in a lot of ways because that arrogance steps in and, and they, they forget that, yeah, I may have been fortunate enough to go to an education, but sometimes the wisest person in the room has learned the hard way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and often that common sense has played into it. The common sense is yeah. important. Yeah, very and, important. And, you know, we become better. We, sur we surround ourselves by being around people who are honest and courageous and love us enough to challenge us in our weaknesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, iron sharpens iron. You go to the gym, I mean, I, I try to go to the gym every morning. I've missed the past week. I've just been too busy to go. But, you know, there's times where I'm so sore the next day, I can't hardly walk. Well, that's how you get better, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it takes mm -hmm. time and it takes effort. And mm -hmm. there's many mornings that I've, you know, stood in the corner and I'm like, oh, I hope I don't throw up in front of everybody <laughs> here. You know, you push yourself too hard. Mm -hmm. But that's what pro athletes do. That's what high school athletes do. Mm -hmm. And, and... You know. Speaking of athletes, you're down to one, Will? Yes. Is he still? Yes. So Katie gets You're married. down to one athlete. Yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart. He's been running so hard. He went straight out of football into two a days in basketball. And, oh, my God. And he looked at me the other night, and he's like, I think I'm done. And I'm you like, know, I remember when you brought Will to the show, he was eight years old. Yes. 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 Yes, eight years old. And he was so cute. And I just, I was thinking about that the other day. I was going through old programs. And, and I just thought, you know, we have seen our loved ones pass away. We have seen our children grow up yes. together. We've seen so many things happen with the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
And there are still people. Um, I remember the day that I had to walk into an attorney's office and um, do something I didn't want to do, which was file bankruptcy. And um, I remember him looking around behind me and he patted on this huge stack. And he said, don't feel bad. I was in tears. He said, don't feel bad. Here are 750 of your best friends. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So bad things happen to good people. Yes, they do. And then we have to learn survival mode. Yes. And that has been really tough because I look back on if I'd have gotten two more jobs, if I'd have done this, if I'd have done that, I could have saved my greatest asset, which was my home. Our greatest asset is still our home, and I'm going to give you a math lesson that'll crack you up. In 1978, now think about this, in 1978, I could have bought a little place for $68,000, okay? <laughs> Today, that little place is going on the market for $235,000. Okay, it had to have a complete reno. I was gonna buy it for 68,000. I was gonna bulldoze it and make a parking lot. I was gonna destroy the old home. It's going on the market today, a two bedroom, one bath for 235. Yeah. Okay, the math would be they're tripling what I could have bought it for. Mm -hmm. I was gonna bulldoze the house, so I was gonna destroy part of the asset. And they went in and remodeled the house, and Lord knows it needed it. <laughs> and they did it from ground up, and they're going to sell it. They, I don't know what they spent on the remodel, but it looks fantastic. Yes. And it's going to sell for two thirty-five for yes. a two-bedroom, one bath. And there's that's asset price inflation, is what it is. Is that crazy? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, a I mean, two-bedroom, one bath, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, think about starting salaries for kids coming out of coming out of school right now. $12 they're, they're, an hour? They're not much. Well, I don't, I don't know exactly what that data is, so I hate That's to That's like a, a local drive-in restaurant. Yeah, but the median household income, what, went up for the first time in 20 years uh, in 2019, and I think in 1998 it was 61,000, 63,000, somewhere around 65,000. So I didn't look at these numbers. That's the bad thing about doing it live. We have no clue what we're going to talk about. Right. So, but the median, the but median household income, <laughs> which means 50% of the population, mm -hmm. households make say 65,000 or less. Let's just say 70,000. Just pick that number up. You know, how do you get started? Mm -hmm. Right. The mm -hmm. Federal Reserve has instituted policies that have caused asset prices to go through the roof. Mm -hmm. And it's nice because, you know, there are people that are owning 10 and 20 rental properties and they're renting them out for what it would cost to, to buy that 235000 right. There's no mercy on our younger generation. No, it's tough. And uh, so, you know, it, it is what it is. But it our is first, asset price Our first purchase home was $10,000. Mm -hmm. It was on one acre and it was a nice double wide. And then the next purchase home was $55,000 and it was a three bedroom, full basement brick that I turned into a sale many years later, 30 years later. <laughs> but, but that was reality. Interest was 13 and three quarters. Mm -hmm. So I was paying huge interest on that loan at Jasper Bank and very happy to do it. And today, if you go over three and a half percent, people go crazy on you. Right. They're like, oh, I can't do that. It takes my payment up too high. Right. It doesn't take their payment up too high. Their pay, their price at the house started too high to begin with. Right. And that's where we're in trouble. Well, one and of, I don't see that changing. So one of two things are going to happen. What I believe that this government's trying to do is to allow inflation to run rampant to where salaries start having to go up. Mm -hmm. But. I mean, vaccine mandates and forcing people to be laid off. I mean, who knows? Maybe that's going to make salary. Maybe they think salary prices are going to go up. But, you know, you, you got a couple of things that have to give. If interest rates go up and incomes don't go up, then the price of houses have to come down. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's math. Mm -hmm. It's monthly mm -hmm. payment. Mm -hmm. So if house prices stay high and interest rates go up and salaries are going to have to go up because to offset that monthly payment, right? Um, you know, the best of, both, best of all worlds would be salaries go up, asset prices come down a little bit, then people have better quality of life. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. something has to give somewhere. Yeah. Doesn't mean that this could <coughs> last another year or two, um, uh, but, but something's got to give. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my biggest concern is, is inflation is continuing to, to show pressure in the supply line. Inment corporate inventories are extremely low. So they're going to have to replenish that inventory 
at higher prices. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody's trying to put it off as long as they can because their hoping prices are going to come down, hoping prices mm -hmm. are going to come down. Well, Home Depot did see some decline in, in lumber prices and things did yes. adjust themselves some. Mm -hmm. So they we did some. see that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But automobiles, now that's a whole, <coughs> whole nother ball game. Yes. Because to buy a new automobile, I think my first new Suburban was 62000 mm -hmm. And I think I understand now they're over 80000 From what I understand. Yeah. Um, haven't bought a new one in a long time, and um, I, you know, it blows my mind. And you think about a kid who says, I want a pickup truck, Mama. Right. Okay. <laughs> you better go to college and become a doctor, and then we'll get you a pickup truck. Right. But, but we've seen things. Our normalcy was our kids all drove vehicles to school by the time their junior year. They all wanted to drive. Now, this didn't make sense because there were three of them. They all three wanted a vehicle. Couldn't ride together. You know, that would have never worked. Because one, you got to pick up your girlfriend. One, you got to pick up your boyfriend. You know, you yeah. know it, it didn't work. So, yeah. <clears throat> but those were our salaries weren't so high, but we could afford our kids a vehicle. Yeah, the prices in, of the cars in relation to the average household income were much more affordable. Fifteen thousand four hundred dollars yeah. for a Chevrolet four four wheel drive, really nice black right. pickup truck, just under sixteen thousand dollars. Right. You can't buy a squat for 16000 I did call one of our dealers about a little car that I wanted, and I told them what I wanted, and they said, that'll start at 28000 ma'am. And I said, what? <laughs> I said, what dealership is this? Because it was the little, what I call them, the little clunky one, you know, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. So there's not a good deal for the kids today. No, there's not. I mean, they're, they're, they're coming out of college with ridiculous amounts of debt with high interest rates on the one debt that you can't bankrupt from. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I saw something good somebody posted yesterday said, how about we make the colleges uh, guarantee income mm -hmm. with their certificate mm -hmm. because they're the ones that are, that are you know, raising the cost of, sure. of education and these kids are stuck with these massive loans. You know, another and no is, jobs. Well, no and, jobs in the field they're in, too, especially. And another guy pointed out, it's like, oh, you know, Biden gets elected, they're going to forgive our student loans. Well, they printed trillions of dollars for the Build Back Better program, for the COVID impact, you know, for the hospitals, but they haven't put any relief on mm -hmm. our future generation, mm -hmm. our, our kids. I mean, I'm sorry, baby boomers, but you're allowing this to happen to your grandkids? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seriously, do you think your parents would have allowed that to happen to their grandkids? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What no. about their parents? Grandpa would have been up there having a hissy fit. Absolutely. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, I mean, this has taken place and nobody's nobody's doing anything about it. Mm -mm. But um, anyway, I got sidetracked there as I got to thinking about that. Well, the year is about to end. Yeah. Um, are more people seeing Profits and losses are more businesses. What, what's happening? Yeah, I mean, I think this has been a highly profitable year for just about, especially anything tied to construction, mm -hmm. which has rippled its way through the economy. So you've got a lot of businesses that have had record years from restaurants to, mm -hmm. to you name it across the board. Right. So all the money the government's printed has trickled its way through, that's for sure. Markets are, have had, you know, unbelievable returns for this year. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, so it's been, for asset prices, it's been great across the board. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. One of our great restaurants, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, that I love to, to support. I took a picture of our order, and I was, she said, what you doing? And I said, I'm going to put that on Facebook. She said, oh, God. She said, we're so shorthanded now, we can't keep up with orders. She said, please don't. And then she laughed, and she said, I'm going to go ahead. But, but the, the labor force is still a great concern. Yes. Still a great concern. And um, is it because people still aren't going back to work because they did save some money and they don't have to because they got that $600? What are we seeing? You know, I really don't know, and nobody's been able to answer that question precisely that makes, that answers, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit of everything. You've got a lot of people, I mean, the market's basically been straight up since, since the COVID crash. So you got a lot of people that are day trading. They've been buying cryptocurrencies. They don't feel like they need to go back to work. Um, you've got other areas. You know, construction is so strong right now that that they're paying for extra help to get people oh, in yeah. there. Oh yeah, I tell people if you can get a contractor right. to give you a price, he's not a good contractor because the rest of them don't have time. Right. Well, we're going to take a break because we're going to do some music right now that is just from these mountains and from these hills. And this is the Welch family. They're from out off of Cardiacay. 
beautiful, beautiful area. And this is a family, and this is just an instrumental in it. I hope it puts you in a mood to tap your foot and to get out and do something today and get out in this beautiful sunshine and just walk around, listen to some great music, and, and listen to um, a family that for many, many years was here at ETC. You know, we, we think about all the families in these mountains that came to ETC and brought their instruments and, and entertained you and gave you something to listen to that was so much fun. And we're gonna go back now and we're gonna honor this family that um, one of them happens, she sings lead on their music and this is just an instrumental, but I just love Miss Debbie, so here we go.
crazy, Cole. He's crazy. I like that. Paul, this hour goes by so fast. It, does. it goes by so fast. I hope that people will listen to you and I hope that they will learn to um, maybe save some money, put it aside, um, maybe look at um, doing things a little differently. It's, it's very hard to think about my first job, I think I made $1.35 an hour. That was many, many years ago, and now most first jobs are starting at 9 to $12 an hour. That's still not as high as it should be based on what the cost of living is today. Yes. It's like it's putting those $9 hour people in poverty, seriously, because that's only $360 a week. Yeah. And that's before taxes. Yeah. So, and the cost of living, we know. And you groceries know. are so expensive now. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. So, so we hope, we hope that we will see y'all stand up for yourselves and, yeah. and, and say, America, it is time we take our country back. Right. Yeah, it is, it is time. And it is time that we get what we are worth. And it is time that we, Dad Gummit, you know, the, I, I've seen it in the housing market and I'm thankful because I sell houses. And I want everybody to grow their wealth, but not to a point that you can't handle the next generation will never be able to buy a first time. And when I use this um, example of a, a house that was 68000 and it's selling today for 235000 of course it had the work done to it, but it's unrealistic for a first time buyer. Right, I mean 235000 is about the best deal I've found for a first time buyer. but. You know that I mean that's on the upper range. I mean like mm -hmm. Hyundai's first house in 1997 was uh, was I think we paid like 45,000 for it. It was a small, mm -hmm. probably 1,200 square foot, three bedroom, two bath. Mm -hmm. And now and that will cost you three hundred and twelve thousand dollars. I, mean, I bet that place would sell where it is. I would be surprised if it didn't sell for two thirty to two fifty. Oh yeah, easily. So, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here today. It's my we, pleasure. You know, all we, we never know what we're going to talk about. I know that the year end is coming, and I know that so many of y'all have battled COVID. I know that so many people have lost loved ones. Again, please pray for David Roper um, as he lays his precious Kathy to rest. That is one of the saddest things, and ball ground is going to be hurting for, for a long time because of that. But we've all lost loved ones, and we all uh, are lucky enough to still have some loved ones. So treasure those that are near you and uh, let them know they're of great value. And you remember that you're of great value. I'll see you again on Monday when Jen and I are going to be cooking, and then the Bridgmans will be here on Tuesday. So hang out with us, and I'll see you again soon. Come to Ball Ground to the Parade. Bye, y'all.